Jackson Radio Show. What's up, winners? Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com, 844-551-8255. I, I love an article that I read recently. And uh, there was a Huffington Post writer, a male, and he uh, admits that President Trump is winning. And I started the show earlier in the broadcast, and I said, I love winning. Always have. I lost a lot. I had to become conditioned to win. And when I say conditioned, I mean conditioned. It's not just a physical thing, but it's a mental thing. The mental thing for winning The mental conditioning is more important sometimes than the physical conditioning. A lot of times the physical conditioning is easy. You can have a guy that has a natural ability to, say, throw a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. But mentally, can he maneuver the ball around the plate so that a batter can't hit it? Can he get into the head of the opponents? That's the mental conditioning. The ability to win is taught... And not only is it taught, it becomes a such a thing that you don't understand how not to win. It doesn't matter what happens. The chips are down. You've seen these guys. We call them heroes. You've seen them in action, sometimes in the movies. And if you're fortunate, maybe you've been around one of them. If you're really fortunate, maybe you are one. It's never hopeless. There's always a shot, always a chance. Yeah, God puts that inside of some people. That they always see the positive side. They always see a way out. That is the to see things through the eyes of God, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, conservatives, we hitched our wagon to the Trump train. And most of you learned what it was like to win. You don't know, in some cases, why you were drawn to Donald Trump. I've asked a few people and they're like, I'm not sure. I just, it just felt like he was speaking to me and I've analyzed it. And I said to myself, you know what it is? They saw a winner. They saw a guy willing to fight. They saw a guy who said, I'm not backing down. I parallel myself to that because I, that's the thing I understand about Trump the most. It's funny. That isn't the thing that attracted to me, attracted to me, attracted me to him when, because I wasn't looking for candidates to be attracted to, so to speak. What happens is this, is we have this thing that says, here are the choices and we, there's an affinity. It's a natural tendency to go, that's my choice. You don't want to just be out there languishing like, well, I'll pick whenever I pick. You people start making choices around you. So you're like, oh, geez, I'm going to run out of choices. I better choose somebody. I'll take Ted Cruz. I'll take a Carly Fiorina. So people started choosing. And and for various reasons, and you can go look at your own psyche, you picked certain people. Most of the time it was who will be the most presidential looking feeling because we come out of the thing of Barack Obama talked to a guy the other day he said to me Kevin I liked Obama because he seemed presidential he just he goes I knew nothing about him he goes and still don't I honestly haven't even analyzed if he was good for me or bad for me but he goes but he felt I felt like he was he, he was on top of things he made me feel like he was on top of things I thought wow What a way to pick somebody. But I said, no, you didn't. You didn't pick him for that reason. You picked him because you saw that a lot of people were gravitating to him. You got caught up in the hoopla. The first black president. Yeah. And he goes, you're right. But I said, I get what you're saying. He he was a. They're going to be the first black president, but he had all those qualities because if he didn't have that quality, if Barack Obama talked like this, if Barack Obama said, we're going to be, I'm going to be the president of the United States and I'm going to represent the people and y'all are going to love everything I say and do. And like this, and he talked like he was a brother that ran a chicken joint on the side. He wouldn't be president. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have felt like he could be president. So that's how he won. They didn't even look at his policies and Barack Obama's not a winner. He doesn't even know what it's like. He's somebody that gets handed stuff. And that's why he was so bad at being president. He he had no clue how to win. He had a machine that 
took all of his popularity and got got him to win on Obamacare. A few other wins. Then he changed the rules and said, if I can't win, I'll go to executive order. And he did. And now everything's being undone because now we have a guy that knows how to win to wins, that knows how to win. For far too long, conservatives became disciplined to losing. The establishment Republicans got us moral victories and we felt good about them. Remember when the Republicans voted 100 percent against Obamacare, but we still lost. And we had the majority in the Senate. But you know why we lost? There were conservatives walking away from that going, well, at least they tried. I mean, those Republicans, they, they stuck the party line. That was what was said. I'll never forget it. I don't remember the makeup of the Senate. I don't know whether we were the, you know, behind or ahead. But here's what I do remember: with at the time that Obamacare passed, they did not have they did not have the House. The Democrats didn't have the House. They may have had the Senate. Harry Reid did some financy, financy, fancy finagling. You know where I was going, right? Fancy finagling, and that's how he got it to go into the Senate in which they carried it, because we had probably had some senators who were ready to do it. Well, no, it ended up having to go to the Supreme Court and all that. But but the point is, they figured out a way. Well, for us, we were happy that the Republicans stuck to their guns. You see, the problem is, trying isn't enough. We needed to win. And now we have a president in office who knows how to win that is a huge problem for the democrats i'll get to that in a second that's what it took though a person who was used to winning a person who was used to achieving and i've said this before and it's worth repeating a thousand times you don't buy a plot of land and not develop it into something magnificent if you're donald trump Donald Trump is already thinking far ahead. Why am I going to buy this property? Why am I going to, you know, develop it? And he already knows he's got a vision of what it's going to look like from the moment he sees it and then makes the determination that that's where he's going to put his money. It's already finished. He sees every issue in American, in America, in America, As politicians having created these ghettos. And all these ghettos are where things of beauty can be if we change them. He can make these ghettos into resorts if you'll give him a chance. And I want to just look at a few of the things that I'm talking about. The issues are nothing but dilapidated, run-down tenement shacks. That's what Trump sees. So he sees illegal immigration as a ghetto. You go, Kevin, you're crazy. Uh, look, he, it, it, there's a thing called tribal language. When you're trying to figure somebody out, you got to understand their tribal language. Donald Trump is a builder. He's going to take a piece of land and he's going to change. He's going to change the landscape. He's going to change the, the perception of that property. Now you get Kevin, he builds in downtown Manhattan. Yeah, but he'll take a building, build it somewhere because it's in some area of Manhattan. that's cheaper, you know, the, uh, a thousand dollars square foot cheaper than such and such. And then he'll make that area the hot area. That's the way he sees an issue. So when he brought up illegal immigration, his first proclamations were around illegal immigration. He spoke truth about the topic, which certainly vexed the left because he promised to stop illegal immigration and build a wall because he said that the illegal, the Mexicans were coming into the country. Some of them were bad people, not all were bad people. They were drug dealers, sex traffickers, and whatever else. Killing American citizens. And he was, he confronted it. And he says, we're going to build a wall. And the wall is under development. The impact of illegal immigration has lessened in this country geometrically. And you see the results. Hey, when is the last time you heard something negative out of Mexico? That Donald Trump, uh, Vincent, Vicente Fox or whatever. He, nobody listens to him. Carlos Slim is looking at Donald Trump and saying, this man's making me a fortune. He's investing in America. He's looking at ways that Mexico is going to partner. He's one of the richest guys in the world, by the way, if you don't know who Carlos Slim is. So 
He's looking at Trump going, you go, amigo. Do your thing. Mexico now is getting its citizens back. Some of its best and brightest are returning home. And we'll, and it'll all get figured out. But that was just one of the issues that Donald Trump said he was going to... One of the very first ones. Then he tackled trade. He single-handedly taken over America's trade policy, dumped, in his own mind, NAFTA and TPP, reduced the trade deficit significantly. I want to get that number. I don't know what that number is because I, they always have to do it you know, months later. But it's gone down. I guarantee you. And we'll get back. When we come back, we'll talk more about this. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. 